It says, For I am the perfect Father. And that's in Matthew. It says, Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand. And that's James 1.17. And then, for I am your provider, and I meet all your needs. I think that's important. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope. And that's Jeremiah 29, 11. And because I love you with an everlasting love. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31, 3. Because I love you with an everlasting love. And my thoughts towards you are countless as the sand on the seashore. Think about that. My love for you is countless as the same on the seashore. And I rejoice over you with singing. I rejoice over you with singing. The angels in the heaven rejoice uh, when they hear us uh, come to cross and repent. I will never stop doing good to you. I know I never stop doing good to you. That's the same as for you, but to you as well. So God doesn't hurt us uh, or hinder us. Um, I desire to establish you with all my heart and with all my soul. So we'll talk about that here in a second. What he means by establish us. It means they're all good things. Success, everything. It just means success. And I want to show you great and marvelous things. That sounds like fun. And if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. And I think that that is when I talk about that boy. It, that's what I'm talking about. It's when you seek and ye shall find. You will find God there and it will fill that void. And I think that that's really when I came to Christ, I felt Christ filled that void. And you won't want to go out and do the things that just don't benefit you personally or physically because those things are harmful and you really start to realize how harmful those things really are. Um, I think that's the one thing that makes a Christian different than other people. Do Christians sin? Do Christians fall short? Um, the answer is yes. And it, it says in John, uh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. It is the difference is that we can overcome through Christ who strengthens us. So if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. And that's in Deuteronomy 4.29. Deuteronomy 4.29. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. So what's it mean by seeking someone with all your heart? It means a true heart, right? A true, a true, a true seeking of really wanting to know the answer, the truth. Yes, I think that um, within us, Helen Keller was blind, deaf, and mute. And she said this in her darkness that she knew that she was not alone. So uh, the evidence of God being with us she knew in her darkness and in her deafness and her muteness and her inability to communicate, she knew that she wasn't alone. Does uh, God show himself to his people? Yes. Is there evidence of that? Yes. And when you read in the Old Testament, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. It's not a detached sort of relationship where you have all this emotion going on. You can't have uh, your life run by emotion. Uh, emotions are wonderful things, happiness, joy, and elation. But your train of your life has to be, I think, uh, controlled by your thinking. So you think it, and you start doing it, and you get involved in it, and then your attitudes and your feelings and other things uh, change in relationships to that thought. It's like a little engine that could. Mm -hmm. He's going up that hill. I know I can, I know I can, I know I can. Well, God gives us that basis of support that lets us know that in His love, we can do it. Yes. Within, within, re, re, within reason. I mean, we can't just go fly off a cliff and expect not to hit the bottom. I mean, there's a thing also called common sense. And He gave us that too. Uh, we would love to be without pain, but uh, the disease when you're without pain, people that are in that disease state, they would like to be able to experience pain because pain keeps you from certain things that you do and protects you in some ways. Some others that came to my mind were, delight in me and I will give you the desires of your heart. And that's in Psalm uh, 37, four. And, um, and I think that that's true too. I think um, when he means the desires of your heart, he doesn't mean that I can go out and do a sinful thing and it's going to be a good thing. He means the desires of our heart, which means 
He'll help me and my husband through prayer and study, have a good relationship with solid foundation. He'll help me in my job, be able to build strong, strong houses for uh, and foundations in our homes for my clients. I mean, it's just, um, and, and the clients see that I'm a Christian. And isn't it weird, even the people have told me that they may not, it may not be their path, Christianity, but they trust Christians. A lot of people grasp the ultimate reality as if what they're saying is true. And uh, if you buy into that, uh, what you think in your heart, so you are, Jesus said. So if you, uh, if you buy into the reality, uh, God loves you, He cares for you, He has a plan for you, He's working all things together for the good, for those that love Him and are called together according to His purpose, is what Paul said. Uh, when you view that, so anything that happens in this world, you'll have tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. He also says in Ephesians 3.20, I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine. And I also think he's also saying here, I'm able to do more for you than you could even do on your own. I think that that's true. He also says in uh, Thessalonians 2.16-17, through 17, For I am your greatest encourager. I am your greatest encourager. He's your greatest supporter. He's encouraging you to do good. When I drive my will after I pray, I just know when I go about my day, that's the Lord encouraging me to get something done, get the house clean so the company can get there, help me to overcome my sickness so that that way I can spend some time with the grandchild or family or children, you know, or just spend time with John. He's my, he's my greatest encourager to get out there and try things I've never done before that is good for me and my temple. You know, hiking that bigger trail that I might not think I could do before. I mean, it does. It's encouraging. So, uh, uh, so God's our greatest encourager uh, in business as well. I mean, I could never have done business with all the people I did business with without without praying first. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. So, right there in Second Corinthians uh, one uh, three through four, Second uh, uh, Corinthians one three through four, I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. What a revelation that is. We are comforting. He's not a father. He's greater than any father we could ever know. Any man father. He is he's spirit. He's not a gender. He's not a male or a female. And we need to start getting that in our heads. He is the one. He is our creator. He loves us. He loves, his, he loves the creation. He loves us. And what's the difference uh, between trouble? Everybody has trouble. Everybody's born, everybody has uh, different things they struggle with in life, and then sooner or later all of us will pass. What's the difference? The difference in our struggles is that beyond the struggle and beyond death, God said, I'm going to make it anew. That God can turn troubles into blessings. He can make a bad situation into a good situation. He can maneuver uh, to even make your enemies uh, live at peace with you. Uh, and you can see examples of that in the Old Testament and the New Testament in reference to encountering and interacting with people that may not be your friend. Right. When you are brokenhearted, I am close to you. And that's in Psalm 34, 18. Psalm 34, 18. When you are brokenhearted, I am close to you. Isn't that wonderful? Paul, when he was uh, in, in confronting Jesus on the road to Damascus, he was on his way to kill and imprison Christians. What Jesus said to him was, I think, pointed. He said, who are you? Paul said. He said, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. He confronted him. So the sad things that happen to Christians Jesus is not removed from them. He said it's me that you persecute. It's me that you put on the cross. It's me that you want to die and to kill. And that you hate. And you hate. And that you bully. Don't do that. Have an awakening as Paul did. You know, go into the city, the street called Straight, and meet the Christ in the pages of the Scripture and in the lives of people that believe in Him. Get to know Him. 
It's a very important thing because the deeper and the more God will actually show you things in your times of troubles and your times of joyfulness. He'll show you things to uplift you and to help raise you back up again. When you're down, he will raise you up. He knows when you're down. Remember, I already told you that one. He knows when you're down and he knows when you rise. He knows it. Yeah. And if he's your greatest supporter, what's he doing? He's lifting you up. He understands that there's a time to be brokenhearted. He gets it. He gets it. The shortest verse in the Bible is Jesus wept. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. And that's Isaiah 40, 11. Let me repeat that one again. I'm repeating the ones I think that really hit home here. As a shepherd carries a lamb, carrying, just picture a shepherd carrying his, a lamb to try to save it from the wolves or because it's hurt or it needs to join the others. I have carried you close to my heart. So he carries us right here, right here. We're, we're all with him right here. How he does it? We can't answer that. It's just an omnipresent God. Mm -hmm. And we've proved omnipresent, omnipresent. So, and we'll talk about that in a minute, in the next video, in the next video. So ladies and gentlemen, one day, God said, one day, I will wipe away every tear from your eyes. And that's in Revelation 21, 3 through 4. Revelation 21, 3 through 4. One day I will wipe every tear from your eyes. So there's going to be times we do feel brokenhearted and completely miserable. But know that God is near. Holding us like a lamb to his heart. We're that near to his heart. So whatever this being spirit being, being, being is, he says he has a heart. He well, has feelings. He has love. And he's pure love. And that participation in our suffering, when Jesus told us, uh, uh, Saul, Paul, Paul, he said, it's me that you're persecuting. So while we're being persecuted and abused and uh, looked down upon uh, at times by people that may seem to have the upper hand, God said, I have always had the upper hand. But my desire is not to, to send people to hell, not to exclude them. Hell is something you choose. Hell is not a place that you... Uh, was meant get, for man. Uh, was meant for man. And Jesus said it very plainly in the judgment. Hell was created for Satan and his angels. So uh, that place was not for us. He also says in Revelation 21, 3 through 4, And I'll take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth. Well, I think it's like having a baby. The concept, and we're removed from the pain, observers of it. But uh, once you go through the pain, how does a woman feel? Well, if they hand you a live, living, healthy baby, the pain is gone. It's like instant. And they tell you that there's still an issue, uh, you're in panic mode because you become that instant mother. And then uh, if you experience a baby's death like we have, then um, you can turn away from God really quickly. And it takes a really strong woman and a really strong husband to see that doesn't happen. Because you can walk away from God not understanding why it happened. So there's a lot of emotions there. And trust me, we understand that. And God understands that. When you put a baby in a casket and in the ground, it's an, under, it's, it's an understatement of, um, of stress, anxiety, and wondering whether you should move further and whether or not you can get over it but it's through the scriptures that we learn that the child is even in how can a mother feel that a child a dead baby is in a better place than what she could give it nurturing it at her breast you know, a good mother how could how could you even possibly imagine that so we have to really put our faith in god and that's when faith comes in not just the science that backs the bible not all of that that's when faith comes in is when you say all right it's okay to mourn and there's going to be some grieving periods god understands that he's going to help me through it but i'm not leaving my jesus i'm not letting anyone steal my jesus well in, in loss uh, everybody has losses everybody has troubles everybody has uh, those things that happen to them that we don't have clear-cut answers and why and the wherefores uh, around it mm -hmm. but the only hope that I know is when my 
mother died and my father died and my brother died and other people that were in Christ died, I have a hope to see them again. That's how I got through this. It was a very difficult time for me. Yes, and I think that's the only thing that can bring you through it is there's hope uh, versus uh, it's over. And it's just like if I don't understand something in reference to certain things, mm -hmm. God says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in the latter verse, he says, I, I will know even as I am fully known. So um, there's a there's an understanding that we can uh, get clarity on some things. And then this last part, um, I am your father and I love you even as I love my son Jesus. And that's in John 17, 23. So um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, end it. So I hope this has helped you ladies and gentlemen. But this video was especially made for the ladies and I want to give an honorable mention to my mother who has really been a great support to me in my time of trial. And then John has an honorable mention as well. I want to uh, mention my mother that prayed for me uh, when I was obstinate, not willing uh, to listen and other people that have uh, come alongside me to help me uh, in life to see uh, some clarity and some things that I uh, wasn't seeing clearly. Uh, God blessing, hit the subscribe button and join us for the ride. We'd love to have you here on our, our little, little homestead, homestead and for Mary Minutes. Okay, love you. Love you. Of the local park. Lexi, you didn't eat your hamburger. You always want mine. So I give her one finally, and then she's, you didn't need it. You're too excited. That's, I call that happy tails. When it's up in the air and it's, when it's wagging, that's a happy tail. <laughs> anyway, they're getting ready to open up the park pool here. We got kids out here playing tennis. Um, it's just, it's, we have a beautiful city park here. Oh, that's it. There's other doggies. Is that another husky? Oh, you got another husky over here. Oh, Is that what this is about? Looks like he's half German Shepherd, half husky. Oh, and he loves the little doggies here coming. Fire trucks are going out. Over there's a playground, the uh, War Memorial. And then, of course, we have the park pool. And that's all opening up Memorial Weekend. So we hope you have a wonderful Memorial Weekend. Blessings.